America, how we doing today? We are gonna do a little cooking again. Finally another cooking cooking video. Um, we were looking around in the deep freeze out in the garage the other day and found, you know, come across some meat that we didn't realize we had down down the bottom, kind of covered up and everything. We thought, oh, we better use this before we uh, before it goes bad. So <laughs> we brought a couple of them in and thawed them out. And anyway, today I've got a, a pound of hamburger. Uh, it's 80-20 uh, hamburger. And uh, she had these sitting over on the shelf, taco shells. And I thought, ah, tacos. So I got taco, I got onion, I got uh, I mean, I got meat, I got onion, I've got uh, taco uh, shells, and I don't have anything else. I don't have tomatoes, and I don't have lettuce, and I don't have any. You know, I have cheese. I have cheese. So you know, I had a couple of ingredients. I couldn't really make tacos. Close, but no cigar. Then I got to think, well, what else can I make? Well, I got I got meat, and I got onion, and I got, ah, I got taters. And these taters, we bought them a while back, and they're starting to get old, they're starting to get some of them little eyelets on there. Better, we better use them up before they go bad. So, got some onion, taters, meat, onion, veggies. Do I got veggies? So I went out and looked, no frozen veggies, no canned veggies, or no, no, uh, no uh, fresh veggies, you know, carrots and whatever and peas and all that, but I do have canned veggies. So I got this uh, mixed vegetables. Like I said, I just look around and see what I got and I throw that in there. You know? So this is what I've got. I'm, I would rather have fresh uh, fresh carrots and fresh peas and you know whatever, but I don't have those. So we're gonna use that. I got a thing, well, we can make shepherd's pie. Okay, so I got uh, I got all the ingredients for shepherd's pie here, plus all the, 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 the peripherals. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. So let's do it. Let's make some fresh or some shepherd's pie. So first thing I did was boil some uh, potatoes and uh, let them boil. They're done, okay, and they're just sitting there warm, ready to go. And I need to uh, start with the onion. I, I went and I looked on a couple of YouTube videos and uh, uh, just you know shepherd's pie. Come up, Gordon Ramsay. He ain't had one. He's throwing stuff in there. Of course, he's using five hundred dollar ingredients on the thing. And I just don't have that. And it, it's just a two minute quick th throw the stuff together real fast video. Then I saw one from uh, Rachel Ray and I thought, well, there you go. Uh, watched her video and I kind of liked that recipe. It looked like it was pretty good. So that's what I'm kind of basing this off of. All right, so yeah, uh, Rachel Ray. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't watch Rachel Ray every day, but Hey, she's got a good show. I just, yeah, yeah, well, I'm usually busy doing other things besides watching her. So anyway, first thing we do is put the uh, oven on and put a little olive oil in the uh, skillet and put our onions in there. Got our onions going. We're gonna cook these up a little bit, so bear with me. And get those onions kind of sauteed and, and uh, cook down a little bit. Okay, while the onion, uh, onions are so, uh, cooking down a little bit, softening all up, let's see what else, we, what else we're gonna put in. We're gonna put a hamburger in, of course, but uh, we're gonna put some seasonings and stuff, and I don't have some of the seasonings they call for, in shepherd's pie, usually uh, rosemary and thyme and all that. I don't have that stuff, so we're gonna ad lib. I've got some oregano and oregano leaves. I've got some minced onions. I probably don't need those because I've got regular onions. I've got some garlic and I've got some garlic powder. Okay, and I got some um, McCormick's Perfect Pitch Savory All-Purpose Salt-Free Seasoning. Whatever. Okay. I've got some sage, and uh, I don't know much about sage. Hmm. Got an odor to it. And then we got salt and pepper, okay? I think I'm gonna put in just the regular oregano, the regular garlic, no garlic powder. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in there for flavoring and some sage, okay? And of course, salt and pepper as, as I need it. So we're gonna set these aside. We're not gonna use those. And one of the things I've learned over, uh, when uh, doing some cooking stuff, is you uh, you get your your uh, your spices and stuff. What you can do is put them in a mortar and pestle and just grind them just a little bit, kind of crack them, break them a little bit. 
brings out so much more flavor than just putting them in the way they are. So let's see, let's put a little bit of everything in there. Put some uh, that seasoning stuff, whatever it is. Put just a little bit of that in there. All right. Put some garlic in there. It's dried garlic, okay. Some of that. This is some uh, oregano. Put a little bit of oregano in there. More than that. It's not coming out as fast as I thought it would. Okay, come on. All right, that ought to be enough. And then uh, we'll let's sprinkle it out. I don't want to pour it out too much. I don't know much about sage. I don't know. This might be a terrible thing to put on here. I don't know. Well, it's not coming out that way. It's coming out this way. Hmm. It does have an odor. A little more. No, okay, not a whole lot. Just, just enough. All right, I'm gonna sit there and crunch this up a little bit. Not a lot. You don't have to powderize it, pulverize it. Just kind of, kind of break them open, you know, so that they, uh, they breathe. All right. So we got all that in there. We put that right in there with the onions. And shoot, the onions are almost on fire. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. Oh no. Onions have got flavor. <laughs> they got burnt flavor now. Oh, cut, cut. Let's do that again. Okay, we're back to where we was. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'm not a very good cook. Uh, what am I doing? I don't need that yet. I need the hamburger. <laughs> I am uh, uh, discombobulated. <clears throat> There we go, put that burger in. Okay, let's see. Um, have y'all ever seen one of these? You ever seen one of them there? A little, uh, it's a meat finger, you know, for hamburger, chopping it up. You know, you ever have a hamburger and you're, it's like frozen or something, you're trying to cook it? And, and anyway, I don't know what they call it. It's a, well, I thought it was a potato masher. And Pam says, no, you dummy, that's for chopping up like hamburger meat. Ooh, it works real good, too. So we're gonna let that hamburger cook down pretty good, and, uh, and got all the spices and everything in there already. Uh, so I don't need any of this stuff anymore. So while we're waiting for that to cook down, let's go ahead and get the taters ready. So we got our got our boiled potatoes, and like Dunny, I don't think too much ahead. If you'll notice, <laughs> I left the skins on there. <laughs> I like skins on my mashed taters, and um, that's why I normally cook them. I like the, the skins on them. It's got, they always say that's where the vitamins are at anyway. Well, I uh, left them on there, and I got to thinking after I put them and boiled them and everything, I'm thinking, oh, that's going to look terrible. It's supposed to be a nice, white, beautiful, creamy layer on the top, you know. Oh, well, live and learn. Yeah. Next time. Okay, so the mashed taters, uh, one of the things I was watching on her channel, on her show and everything was you take mashed taters and you put sour cream or cream cheese or, or, or uh, what she put was sour cream and heavy cream and I don't have any heavy cream but she said something like uh, uh, a cream cheese would work too you know just try to lighten it up and everything and you put a, a egg yolk not a whole egg just an egg yolk so uh, let's put the egg yolk in there and <clears throat> there's one egg yolk
I don't know, come off there. There we go. Got some cream cheese on there. Mmm, it's good. Put a little sour cream in here. And I got the butter for later on. Butter goes with that right there. There we go. Yeah, this right there. Mush it all up. Skin and all. Why they put the egg in there, I'm not quite sure. Uh, maybe it's a, a binding agent or something. <laughs> I don't know. But it's in there. I think my mom always put just um, uh, just butter, I think. Mashed potatoes and butter. Set them aside for now. Put that away later. Don't need a spoon no more. Suppose we'll check on the hamburger. There we go. Nicely doing. Nicely doing. Oh, flip over. Back up a little bit, she slowed down on me. Hamburger's coming along real well. Um, got the mashed taters done. Uh, what if, oh, we need to make some gravy. I know, had no idea, I've never heard of this. So we're gonna make some gravy. Uh, where's my, there's my veggies. I put the veggies in kind of last, because those are already cooked or soft, I mean, they don't take a whole lot. Uh, if they were raw vegetables, you'd already have them in there. So they cook down and get soft, but the, the canned vegetables are already soft. So, uh, what else would we need? What else would we need? Gravy, gravy, gravy. All right, <clears throat> let's put this over here. Turn that on there, put that there. And we need butter, flour, and beef broth. I have not no beef broth. I have chicken broth. So we're going to use chicken broth instead. <clears throat> so you put the butter in there and you let it melt down. You got to wait till the pan gets warm. It's actually warming up pretty quick. So we'll put a little bit of flour and a little bit of chicken broth in there and stir it around until it's done. And then we're going to add that to that. But I think I'm going to rip, drain some of that grease off of there because you don't want greasy hamburger in your shepherd's pie. So when you take it out, from what I, what I know, I don't know a lot, but what I know about shepherd's pie is when you take it out of the pan or the casserole dish or whatever, it should come out almost, you know, and retain its shape and everything, almost like lasagna does or something. It shouldn't come out and go, <clears throat> it should still stay nice and firm. And I think you get the grease out of there and that'll help do that. And I think that's what the gravy does too with the flour and everything kind of solidifies everything. So it comes out in a, a single serving square, you know. So, got the butter melting down fast. There we go. All right, while pouring the grease out, I happen to notice there's still a little bit of red in that hamburger, so I'm going to let it cook a little bit longer. And uh, the butter is done. Oh, yeah, ready to go. Let's get some flour in there. Now, I saw another recipe that they just threw the flour right into the uh, hamburger. And Rachel Ray says... <laughs> Rachel Ray says, don't put it in and cook it with the butter so you don't so it doesn't have that pasty flour taste. You'll have a cooked flour taste. So I'm what Rachel says, that's what you gotta do. Uh -uh. 
Oh yeah, that's another thing I've learned since I started cooking. When you got something like this that has a lot of grease on it and stuff, don't flip it right over the burner because a little piece will come off and it gets on that steel or that uh, glass cooktop burner and it's hard to clean off. Get over here and do it right over here. Now, what do you think about that? See, there's a couple little pieces of onion that would have been on that burner and been stinking the place up right now. So a hamburger is just about done. That gravy, I don't know. That gravy just doesn't look all that good. Mmm. Mmm, -mm, I don't know. But we're going to put it in there anyway. <laughs> Alright. So that's in there. Whew, see, I got one of them on there. And it's stinking the place up. All right, we're getting ready to plan a, a dish this all up. And uh, I had choices on the different kinds of casserole dishes to use. Well, I kind of figured this big, well, I kind of figured that big was a little too big for all the more I have because it's only one pound of hamburger. This one might be just about right. This one's probably a little too big also. I probably would use this one right here. But, Don Domi, you can use two single servings, one for me, one for Pam, I think. So I'm going to use these right here. If there's any extra taters or whatever, we'll just save them for another, another meal. So, um, we're going to let this simmer down just a little bit more. Get some of that, that chicken broth I poured on there to come out, or evaporate out. And we uh, need to put our veggies in now, I think. So get them heated up. And probably on a... Oh! There we go. I wonder where she kept them. Uh, I need to turn the oven on, broil. There we go. We're going to put them in the broiler here in just a little bit. Actually, I'll put this down. One, one more. Alright, so uh, what do we got to do? Where was that? Where was I at? Push, start. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do? Oh, veggies. You got to put veggies in here. So, Do not pour the liquid in there. Too much, too much liquid. So we're going to put just some of this in here, not a whole bunch. There we go. Just whatever eyeball looks right. Ah, maybe about like that. How does that look? Stir it around, see if that's a good mixture. I do believe it is. Yeah. All right, that's been cooking down nice. I mean, everything's looking really, really good. I've never made this. I don't, I don't think. I don't think I've made it before. Can't think. I can't remember if I have. But anyway, um, I like to throw things out that I've never done before. And I, there's most cook, cooking I haven't done before. Uh, for so many years of my life, just living out on the road and everything, uh, uh, eating at restaurants and and fast food joints and stuff like that. Uh, I never started cooking until I got into the uh, semi with the, the big kitchen. So once I got into that, I was like a newborn trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. I was, I was a real, real newbie. 
and I'm still not that good at it. Oh, we forgot salt and pepper. I'm gonna put that in there now. So anyway, I was, I've always been kind of a newbie at this, you know, I just uh, kind of flying by the seat of my pants. And if, if I can't eat it, it's bad, because I can eat just about anything. <laughs> kind of got an old iron gut. Uh, also, it's another thing. People have asked uh, comments and everything, Stan, it looked like you gained a little bit of weight back. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, while I was up there in Kansas at the weed harvest, uh, Dina is such a good cook, and she brings these excellent meals out to the field. and it's, you, it's so good you don't want to say no. Yeah, and I'm on a diet. I can't eat this wonderful food. And it's almost an insult, too. You know, hey, she worked, worked all day cooking this food up, and then you don't eat it. So I ended up eating more food than I thought or ought, uh, ought to, I guess, because it was just so darn good. I was at 288 when I started that diet. I got down to 224, and I'm back to around 245 right now. So. That's one of my new goals is once we get to traveling and everything out on the RV and, and everything, try to get more into a regular, I've been trying to do OMAD, one meal a day kind of stuff, and I'm kind of maintaining with that. Uh, I'm not gaining any more weight, I'm not losing any weight, I'm just kind of maintaining right around the 245 area. So I think I'm gonna get through Christmas into January, and once we start in January, I'm gonna start really getting after it and trying to, trying to lose this again. Uh, I didn't gain it all back, of course, because I mean, I was way out there, and I haven't gained it in my face too much and stuff like that, but I have gained it in my butt, or my, my belly and my legs a little bit more, and that's where I lost a lot of it was in my legs before, so anyway, I think we're about ready to bowl this up and stick her in the oven, so with that, shut me up and let me do this. So very good, very good. We are done. Pam ought to be here in a little bit, so we're gonna have to throw them in the oven. There's that one, and there's that one. And how long we put them in there? Until they look right. <laughs> I don't have a timer on that, I, I don't know. Um, the idea is just to kind of get the top kind of golden brown from the broiler, and everything else is already cooked in there. Uh, and hot and everything, so it doesn't take long to heat the whole thing up. Uh, but anyway, we'll be probably 10 minutes, I'm guessing, something like that. But I'm just going to keep a real close eye on it, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, uh, meantime, I'm going to kind of clean this stuff up. Oh, by the way, that's this is how much taters we had left. And that's about right for one serving tomorrow for lunch or something. And they look real good too. Put these little mitts on because they're hot. Oh yeah, look at that. Golden brown on top. And uh, we'll leave that one there for now. We're just gonna take a test bite because I'm gonna wait for Pam to get home before we eat them. But uh, let's see here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna let them cool off just a little bit. <laughs> I've learned that before, right? <laughs> there we go. It is done. It is nice and cool now. We're cooled off, and we get a good little bite here of everything. It's exactly what you'd think it tastes like. Very good. 
Very good. Mashed taters and hamburger and carrots and peas and mm. comfort food. Comfort, comfort, comfort food. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave this alone until Pam gets home. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be out on the road here probably next January, right here in another three or four weeks, I guess, heading to Arizona, uh, or a couple weeks. When, by the time you see this video, it'll be a couple weeks away. So, um, first in early January, heading out to Arizona, the court site, and uh, I'm going to hang out with the, the RTR crowd out there. So, with that, see you there. Bye.